People get ready. There's a train a cup. You don't need no baggage. You just get on board. And all you need is faith to hear the diesel song. You don't need no ticket. You just thank the Lord. The trains of joy, picking up passengers from coast to coast. And faith is the key, open the doors and for them. There's room for all of the love and lost. And people get ready, there's a train to come. Just get on board, and all you need is faith to hear the diesel hum. You don't need no ticket. You just thank the Lord. afternoon. Welcome to worship today as we celebrate Palm Passion Weekend. What a beautiful day to gather. What a beautiful day to hear the story of Jesus' triumphal entry, but how quickly that changes. And soon they're yelling out words of crucify, crucify him. Today we will make that movement here within our worship service. So welcome to worship here in Sanctuary and online. My name is Mike Sager, along with Pastor Craig Larson. We are the pastors here at Desert Hills. And it's a joy and pleasure to have you worshiping with us today on this most special day as we begin our journey of Holy Week. One of the things that we do every time we gather here at Desert Hills on the weekend, we remind ourselves what we believe God is calling us to be about. So I invite you to join in with me as we proclaim together our mission statement. Here at Desert Hills Lutheran Church, we celebrate grace. We make disciples who make a difference. 
may be so among us today and every day of our lives. Some announcements for the coming weeks ahead. First of all, thank you, Nick, for being here today. It's great to have you here worship with us. I want to remind you that the Red Cross is having their blood drive this uh, April 4th. If you'd like to register, you need to go online or you need to call 1 800 Red Cross and make sure you get a registration uh, time uh, for April 4th. The last day to purchase Easter lilies and your Easter lunch tickets is also April 4th. So you can come in, give blood, uh, donate to the uh, Easter lilies, and make, get lunch. So it's a full package deal on the 4th. So come in on the 4th and do that. April 17th is the Flim Golf Classic. Uh, the t day to register is the next day, April 5th. So the next day you can register uh, for the Flim Golf Tournament. That is the last day of registration. You will notice out in the narthex um, the missing man table this weekend in honor of National uh, Vietnam War Veterans Day. So we thank uh, Ron Smeltzer for always reminding us of those who gave their lives and served our country. So just take a moment as you leave the sanctuary today and just uh, give thanks and especially remember those who are still missing. This next week we have two celebrations of life. Mary Hosteller is being celebrated April 8th, so next Saturday at 10 a.m. in the chapel. And then LaVon Johnson's celebration of life will take place on April 11th at 1 o'clock here in the sanctuary. So please keep both families in your prayers um, as they go through this time of grief, but also as they celebrate life. And what a, what a week to do that, to remind her that death has been defeated and Jesus Christ is risen. And so we too are raised with him. So just please note that. Uh, we are moving into Holy Week. So here are some announcements about our Holy Week services. First of all, the church office will be closed the Monday after Easter. So April 11th, or 10th, the church office will be closed. Just be aware of that, of the whole building. So um, just in observant of Easter. So just be uh, mark that in your calendars. On Thursday, Monday, Thursday, we're having our worship services at noon and 7 p.m. They will both have Holy Communion at both services. And then on Good Friday, uh, we have worship at uh, noon, uh, the country trio at 3, and then again at 7, the traditional. So we have the choirs at both the noon and the 7, and the country trio at the 3 o'clock service on Good Friday. On Easter weekend, we have our normal 3 and 5 o'clock on Saturday, and 8.30, I mean 8, no, 8.30, 9.30, no, 8, 9, 30, you know when, 8, 9, 30, 11, there we go, on Easter, so it's just going to be a blur on Easter anyway, so uh, just come, celebrate, just show up sometime, and just stay until it's over, so that'll, that'll work. Again, those are announcements for uh, today, we hope the service is a blessing to you, let's take a moment and um, uh, prepare our hearts for worship. Gracious loving God, just bless us this day as we gather here. May we experience your grace and peace as we come before you uh, as your disciples to hear your story of love and grace. In Jesus' name, amen. We'll now have our opening song. Why don't you lead me to that rock that is higher than I own? Lead me to that rock. Lead me to that rock. Why don't you lead me to that rock that is higher than I? Thou hast been a shelter for me. Won't you go down the well to search among the sheep, my brother? Thou hast been a shelter for me. Well, you'll find him there, so I am told, with those he loves to keep, my brother. Thou hast been a shelter for me. Why don't you lead me to that rock that is higher than I? Oh, lead me to that rock. Yes, Lord, lead me to that rock. Why don't you lead me to that rock that is higher than I? Thou hast been a shelter for me. If you go into the wilderness where dying ones are lost, my brother, thou hast been a shelter for me. 
Well, you'll find him there to heal and bless no matter what the cost. My brother, thou has been a shelter for me. Why don't you lead me to that rock that is higher than I? Oh, lead me to that rock. Yes, Lord, lead me to that rock. Why don't you lead me to that rock that is higher than I? Thou has been a shelter for me. Why don't you lead me to that rock that is higher than I? Oh, lead me to that rock. Yes, Lord, lead me to that rock. Why don't you lead me to that rock that is higher than I? Thou hast been a shelter for me. Our worship continues. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Our gospel this night is the palm story as it comes to us from the gospel of Matthew, the 21st chapter. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethphage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and at once you will find a donkey tied there with her colt by her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, say the Lord needs them, and he will send them right away. This took place to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet. Say to daughter Zion, See, your kingdom co king comes to you, gentle, and riding on a donkey, and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had instructed them. They brought the donkey and the colt, and placed their cloaks on them for Jesus to sit on. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and those that followed shouted, Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and asked, who is this? The crowd answered, This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. The Gospel of the Lord. During our song, if you want to move your palm branches, feel free. <laughs> I saw a wayward traveler in tattered garments clad And struggling up the mountain, it seemed that he was sad His back was heavy laden, his strength was almost gone It shouted as he traveled, deliverance has come Then palms of victory, crowns of glory The sun was sinking low, it overcome the mountain and reached the veil below. He saw that golden city, his everlasting home, and shouted loud, Hosanna, deliverance has come. Then palms of victory, crowns of glory, palms of victory, I shall
While gazing on that city Just o'er that narrow flood A band of holy angels Came from the throne of God They bore him on their pinions They bore the dashing foam And joined him in his triumph Deliverance has come Then palms of victory Crowns of glory Palms of victory I shall wear Then palms of victory Crowns of glory Palms of victory I shall I invite you to lift your palm branches as we pray over them as a sign of our triumphant victory of our Lord and Savior. Let us pray. We give you praise, O oh God, for the redeeming of the world through our Savior Jesus Christ. Today he entered the holy city in triumph and was proclaimed Messiah and King by those who spread their garments and branches along his way. Bless these branches and those who carry them. Grant us grace to follow our Lord in the way of the cross, so that, joined to his death and resurrection, we may enter life with him through the same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Down at the cross where my Savior died Down where for cleansing from sin I cried There to my heart was the blood applied Glory to His name
as we now enter into the contemplation of the passion of our Lord Jesus Christ and meditate on the salvation of the world through his suffering, death, burial, and resurrection. Let us pray. Everlasting God, in your endless love for the human race, you sent our Lord Jesus Christ to take on our nature and to suffer death on the cross. In your mercy, enable us to share in his obedience to your will and in the glorious victory of his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. This afternoon, we're going to be focusing now our attention on the passion of Jesus according to the Gospel of St. Matthew. We're going to be doing this through Reader's Theater because the reality is what can you say more than experiencing Jesus' final moments as he offers himself to us and to the world on the cross. So for this week, your Dig Deeper assignment is to spend some time either in the, Ma in the book of Matthew or in one of the other Gospels on the Passion Story. Allow that story to speak to you and allow you to understand the depths of God's love for you and for all of creation. So at this time, I invite you to begin to allow these words to wash over you. You will see as we go through different scenes, there will be different images placed up on the screen. So that helps you uh, just get a sense of what's going on as we read this story together. We begin our passion story according to the Gospel of Matthew. Then Jesus went with his disciples to a place called Gethsemane. And Jesus said to them, Sit here, while I go over there and pray. Jesus took Peter and the two sons of Zebedee along with him. And he began to be sorrowful and troubled. Then he said to them, My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. Going a little further, he fell with his face to the ground and prayed, My father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me. Yet not as I will, but as you will. Then Jesus returned to his disciples and found them sleeping, and asked Peter, Couldn't you men keep watch with me one hour? Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. So Jesus went away a second time and prayed, My father, if it is not possible, for this cup to be taken away, unless I drink it, may your will be done. When he came back, Jesus again found them sleeping, because their eyes were heavy. So he left them and went away once more and prayed the third time, saying the same thing. Then he returned to his disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and resting? Look, the hour has come, and the Son of Man delivered into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us go. Here comes my betrayer. While Jesus was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived. With Judas was a large crowd armed with swords and clubs sent from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now the betrayer had arranged a signal with them. The one I kiss is the man. 
arrest him. Going at once to Jesus, Judas said, Greetings, Rabbi. And kissed him. Jesus replied, Do what you have come for, friend. Then the soldiers stepped forward, seized Jesus, and arrested him. With that, one of Jesus' companions reached for his sword, drew it out, and struck the servant of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Put your sword back in its place, for all who draw the sword will die by the sword. Do you not think I could call on my father, and he will at once put at my disposal more than twelve legions of angels? But how then would scripture be fulfilled, that it says this must happen this way? In that hour, Jesus said to the crowd, Am I leading a rebellion, that you have come out with swords and clubs to capture me? Every day I sat at the temple courts teaching, and you did not arrest me. But this has to be taken place that the writings of the prophets might be fulfilled. Then all the disciples deserted him and fled. Those who had arrested Jesus took him to Caiaphas, the high priest, where the teachers of the law and the elders had assembled. But Peter followed him at a distance, right up to the courtyard of the high priest. He entered and sat down with the guards to see the outcome. The chief priests and the whole Sanhedrin were looking for false evidence against Jesus so that they could put him to death. But they could not find any, though many false witnesses came forward. Finally, two came forward and declared, This fellow said, I am able to destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days. Then the high priest stood up and said to Jesus, Are you not going to answer? What is this testimony that these men are bringing against you? But Jesus remained silent. The high priest said to him, I charge you under oath by the living God. Tell us if you are the Messiah, the Son of God. You have said so. But I say to all of you, from now on you will see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of the Mighty One and coming on the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, He has spoken blasphemy. Why do we need any more witnesses? Look, now you have heard the blasphemy. What do you think? The Sanhedrin replied, He is worthy of death. Then they spit on his face and struck him with their fists. Others slapped him and said, Prophesy to us, Messiah, who hit you? Now Peter was sitting out in the courtyard, and a servant girl came to him. You were also with Jesus of Galilee. But Peter denied it before them all. I don't know what you're talking about. Then Peter went out to the gateway, where another servant girl saw him and said to the people there, This fellow, he was with Jesus of Nazareth. Peter denied it again with an oath. I don't know the man. After a little while, those nearby went up to Peter and said, Surely. You are one of them. Your accent gives you away. Then he began to call down curses, and Peter swore to them, I don't know the man. Immediately, 
a rooster crowed. Then Peter remembered the words that Jesus had spoken. Before the rooster crows, you will disown me three times. And Peter went outside and wept bitterly. Meanwhile, Jesus stood before Pilate, and Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? You have said so. When, Peter was, when Jesus was accused by the chief priests and the elders, he gave no answer. Then Pilate asked him, Don't you hear the testimony they are bringing against you? But Jesus again made no reply not even to a single charge, to the great amazement of Pilate. Now it was Pilate's custom at the festival to release a prisoner chosen by the crowd. At that time, they had a well-known prisoner whose name was Barabbas. So when the crowd had gathered, Pilate asked them, Which one do you want me to release to you, Barabbas or Jesus, who is called the Messiah? For Pilate knew it was out of self-interest that they had handed Jesus over to him. While Pilate was sitting on the judge's seat, his wife sent him this message. Don't have anything to do with that innocent man. For I have suffered a great deal today in a dream because of him. But the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowd to ask for Barabbas and to have Jesus executed. Pilate asked the crowd, Which of the two do you want me to release to you? Barabbas! 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 What, what shall I do then with Jesus who is called the Messiah? Crucify him! Crucify him! Why? What crime has he committed? Crucify him! Crucify him! When Pilate saw that he was getting nowhere, but that instead an uproar was starting, he took water and washed his hands in front of the crowd. I am innocent of this man's blood. It is your responsibility. And all the people answered, His blood is on us and on our children. It was then that Pilate released Barabbas to them. But he had Jesus flogged and handed him over to be crucified. Then Pilate's soldiers took Jesus into the praetorium and gathered the whole company of soldiers around him. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him and then twisted together a crown of thorns and set it on his head. They put a staff in his right hand. Then they knelt in front of him and mocked him. Hail, King of the Jews! They spit on Jesus and took the staff and struck him on the head again and again. After they had mocked him, they took off the robe and put his own clothes on him. Then the soldiers led him away to crucify him. As they were going out, they met a man from Cyrene named Simon, and they forced him to carry Jesus' cross. They came to a place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. There they offered Jesus wine to drink mixed with gall, but after tasting it, he refused to drink it. When they had crucified him, they, 
they divided up his clothes by casting lots. And sitting down, they kept watch over him there. Above his head, they placed the written charge against him. This is Jesus, king of the Jews. Now two thieves were crucified with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by hurled insults at him, shaking their heads and saying, You who are going to destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, save yourself. Come down from the cross if you are the Son of God. In the same way, the chief priests, the teachers of the law, and the elders mocked him also. Ah, he saved others, but he can't save himself. He's the king of Israel. Let him come down now from the cross, and we will believe in him. He trusts in God. Well, let God rescue him now if he wants him. For he said, I am the son of God. And in the same way, the thieves who were crucified with him also heaped insults on him. From noon until three in the afternoon, darkness came over all the land. About three in the afternoon, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of those standing there heard this, they said, He's calling Elijah. Immediately, one of them ran and got a sponge. He filled it with wine vinegar and put it on his staff and offered it to Jesus to drink. The rest said, Now leave him alone. Let's see if Elijah comes to save him. Stained with 
with blood so divine a wondrous beauty I see for it was on that old cross Jesus suffered and died to part in and sanctify me so I'll cherish the old rugged cross until my trophies are last I lay down I will clear Our worship continues as we affirm our faith together as we confess. As people who long to be followers of Jesus the Christ, we affirm together these truths about Jesus. Jesus, who is the Christ, is truly God. But he did not try to remain equal with God. Instead, he gave up everything to become a slave and became human like us. Christ humbled himself through selfless obedience to God and offered his life for us on the cross. Because of his obedience, God lifted him high above all of creation. There will be a time when at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow in worship both the living and the dead. We give praise to God and proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord of all. Amen. We continue by gathering our offerings. From the manger to the cross, the rugged cross of Calvary, the road that Jesus walked for you and me, all alone by this world forsaken till he shed his blood for me. From the manger to the cross, the rugged cross of Calvary. The story in the Bible, it's a message sad but true. The life our Savior lived on earth is told. Found upon the pages of the Master's book of truth. 
Every word so precious to my soul. From the manger to the cross, rugged cross of Calvary, the road that Jesus walked for you and me, all alone by this world forsaken till he shed his blood for me. From the manger to the cross, the rugged cross of Calvary. No earthly treasures did he own, he sought no wealth or fame. Weary was the path he had to trot. Here he suffered many things, for this world knew him not. He died upon the cross, the Son of God. From the manger to the cross, rugged cross of Calvary. The road that Jesus walked for you and me, all alone by this world forsaken till he shed his blood for me. From the manger to the cross, the rugged cross of Calvary. From the manger to the cross, rugged cross of Calvary, the road that Jesus walked for you and me, all alone by this world forsaken till he shed his blood for me. From the manger to the cross, the rugged cross of Calvary. In preparation for our prayers for this afternoon, we hear the words from Isaiah chapter 53. Surely he took up our pain and bore our suffering, yet we considered him punished by God, stricken by him and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him, and by his wounds we are healed. Let us pray. Almighty God, we come this day to give you our thanks, our prayers, our gifts of time, talent, treasure, for your continued mercy, mission in the world to bring good news to those who need it, help and hope for all people. Merciful God, we remember this day those who have recently died, we remember this day, LaVon Johnson. O oh God, receive her into the arms of your mercy and everlasting peace. And may the truth and promise of God's resurrection bring comfort and hope to their families and friends who grieve. Merciful God. New to our prayer list is Judy Lyle. Leaving the prayer list with thanksgiving for healing is George Reek and Jan Kimmis. We now take this time to silently pray, not only for those who remain on our prayer list, but for those who we know to be in special need in our hearts and in our minds for the situations in their lives. Merciful God, receive our prayer. 
O Lord, empower us as we walk this walk with Jesus in this journey of Holy Week. By your strength, may we not deny Jesus as Peter did, but to seek that love of Christ and be bold in our journey to the cross. May we invite the dying and rising of Jesus into our hearts and be willing to be formed by our most profound aspects of our faith. Merciful God, we think of our world, O oh God, as Jesus wept at the tomb of Lazarus, so we cry out and weep for those lives who were taken this week in Nashville. Grant your never-failing grace to be given to all those involved, and may they know a deep sense of your presence and of your comfort. Help us as we seek your protection and wisdom in protecting our children and all those who are in the way and who are vulnerable. Give your peace to those who are facing the struggles of death and encourage us to journey with those whose lives bear this pain and this suffering. Merciful God, we think of those, God, who have been affected by the tornadoes in our land as their lives have been destroyed, as their property has been destroyed, and as they await and wonder when the next will come. Help them, O oh Lord, and help those who are working on our behalf to bring comfort and be those caring hands. Merciful God. This week, O oh God, we remember all those who served during the Vietnam War. Those many lives that were lost and broken by the pain and brutality. Bring to your healing, God, all those who continue to suffer from that pain of war and the pain of loss. Merciful God. Gracious God, we come to you for the care and concern of all of those who are weary with the weight of brokenness and pain. We ask that you would now, even in these days, take their burden, restore them to health, and strengthen them in spirit. May you cause us to give that care for those who we come across who are in need of your pain. Protect, protecting God, we seek your time for those in our community who continue to travel here and back and forth, especially during this Easter season, but also as they return to their homes. Merciful God. Almighty God, we pray all of these things because of and through your blessed Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. In his name, amen. I invite you now to hear these words, whether here in sanctuary or online. In the night in which Jesus was betrayed, he took bread. He gave thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and he gave it to all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Please join me now in the prayer our Lord taught us. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. This is the very body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us on the cross so that we may live with him for now and eternity.
For those of you online, I invite you to receive the bread and wine, the very body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. As you share this meal with those that you are with, know that you share it with the body of Christ here and across the world and across time. For this meal unites us in a common vision and a common understanding and a united body. Receive the gifts of God. We have the lighter liquid is grape juice, the darker is the wine. We also have gluten-free wafers. That is something you need. Come and receive the gifts of God. Come and see, come and see, come and see a man from heaven. Could it be, oh could it be, we will see the face of God. the service was a blessing to you and it may help prepare you for the joyous proclamation that he is risen. Again, we invite you to come during our Holy Week celebrations as we prepare ourselves for the wonderfully good news that Christ is alive, death has been defeated, and life is restored. If you are a first-time visitor, we hope the service was a blessing to you. We invite you to stop by the welcome desk so that we can greet you properly and just uh, welcome you for being part of this community. You have palm branches. If you're not going to use those palm branches, there are baskets as you leave the worship space. We just invite you to put those in and we'll use them for our next service. But if you want to take them home and put them somewhere, feel free to do that. We're just, um, we just don't want to throw them in the garbage. So we're going to recycle them and reuse them for the next service. <laughs> we, I invite you now to receive the blessing of God. As you go from here. Remember that you have been redeemed by the blood 
of Jesus Christ. Trust in God and love one another deeply. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I invite you to please stand for our sending song. One morning in Jerusalem about the break of dawn A great trial was in session They tried my blessed Lord They scorned him and they mocked him They made him carry the cross On top of Calvary Mountain They crucified my Lord Oh, he cried from the cross Forgive them, blessed Father, he died upon the cross. Oh, he cried from the cross. The Son of God was dying to save the world from loss. St. Peter, he denied him at that awful trial that night. He said he never knew him. It was an awful sight. He looked upon St. Peter with eyes of perfect love. St. Peter's heart was broken. He prayed to God above. Oh, he cried from the cross. Forgive them, blessed Father. He died upon the cross. Oh, he cried from the cross. The Son of God was dying to save the world from loss. Oh, we cry. Forgive them, blessed Father, he died upon the cross. Oh, he cried from the cross. The Son of God was dying to save the world from loss. Go in peace. We are the body of Christ. Father, he died upon the cross, oh, he cried from the cross. The Son of God was dying to save the world from love. Father, he died upon the cross, oh, he cried from the cross. The Son of God was dying to save the world from loss. 